Hi everyone, Shane from the Reptile Doctor and this is an eastern long neck turtle and as you can see she's sort of been held in a bit of an unusual position she's actually wedged into an empty tissue box so her head's here, she's anaesthetised at the moment and we've got her connected to a ventilator because she won't be breathing on her own the reason that we've got her in this position is that she has been hit by a car and she's actually got a fractured right humerus, the upper arm bone which is down in here and I'll show you the x-ray of that in a second but we're going to attempt to pin that today to get that well aligned and we've put her in this position because it's the position we need to be have her in to be able to get access to that site so we'll show you the x-ray and then we'll, we'll go to surgery so here's the x-ray of that turtle and as you can see she's grabbed it, she's got uh, quite a number of eggs in there but Obviously that's not her problem, her problem is up here. So this bone just here is her right humerus and it's a fracture just there. So it's quite high up, it's in quite a tricky position. So as we've said we're going to attempt to pin that and at least get some alignment and um, some fixation in that so it has a chance to heal. Right, so we've got her anaesthetised and positioned just to get you orientated in the video here. So this is her front right leg here, going down into the shell. Her head and neck goes down over this way, hooked up to the anaesthetic machine. So we're gonna make an incision down in here to access that bone. And uh, it's gonna be fiddly because it's down in deep and we're gonna have limited access. So hopefully we can get in there and place a pin in. So. So we made our incision and I found the first part of the fragment, I'm holding that with my forceps there. That's what we call the distal fragment or the fragment down towards the elbow. And it's got a nice smooth break right through it. So I'm just going to have a dig around a little bit further deeper and see if we can find the uh, proximal part or the, the upper part. So we can line that up and we'll try and put a pin down the middle of that to get it back in a straight line. Right, so we're going to use this instrument here called a striker drill and you can see at the point here we've got a little wire coming out and this machine, make the button, spins that I clamp onto the actual wire as I'm pushing it through so this allows me to accurately place it pretty quickly and without twisting too much so it doesn't cause too much bone damage So step one is I've put that wire down the middle of that bone and driven it out through the skin on the other side. I'm going to pull that pin as far out as I can, line it up to the other way and drill back down into the upper fragment. So this is called what we call a retrograde pinning and hopefully that will get that bone all nicely lined up. So we managed to get the pin through, so it's passing up through the bone of the humerus through the fracture and coming out further up the fragment and it's actually quite stable so I'm quite happy with the stability probably not a hundred percent happy with exactly how it's positioned but I think that's as good as we're going to get in an animal of this size so I'm going to cut this pin off here so this is the x-ray with the pin in position I haven't cut it here yet we've come out of surgery just to get a, an intraoperative x-ray and as you can see the pin is sitting in the humerus here coming out the side because of the curvature of this bone ideally we go up the middle of that bone but it's just impossible with that curved bone the good thing about this is it's away from her elbow joint so that's fine and then this is only the short little what we call proximal fragment and that pin is sitting it's a little bit hard to assess it or fully understand what's going on in the x-ray there but that, that pin is sitting just in that fragment again hasn't gone into a shoulder joint so uh, I haven't got 100% alignment through there, but that's fine. She's still going to end up with a functional leg, and that's part of the problem is that we've had this turtle in for a little while, and she hasn't really been using this leg properly 
we thought we were hoping she was going to just heal without us intervening, but um, unfortunately she's not been using that leg, so it's obviously been causing a problem since the reason we've had to go to surgery on her. All right, so we've cut the pin off so it's not sticking out through the leg, and we've got the fracture all lined up through here. So now I'm just gonna close the skin, or the, the subcutaneous tissues in the skin. I was hoping to get what we call an external fixation on this because it's a tube and it's fractured, it has the potential to still rotate from side to side or around the actual pin. So um, my plan was to pop, try and get a little wire on either side of the fracture and create a little external scaffold, but the, the bone's just too small for me to be able to achieve that. So it's pretty stable and we can sort of bandage her up and keep this leg fairly mobile for the next sort of six weeks and I think that will be adequate to stabilize her. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the skin now. So I've stitched up the skin here, four little stitches to get that all back together. So the plan with this turtle now is we'll wake her up and in the next day or two we'll induce her to lay those eggs and we'll hang on to those and incubate them and um, we'll keep her in hospital for a few more days just make sure that she's getting around okay and then we'll send her off to one of the wildlife carers who will look after her for the next six weeks until we get the stitches out and we'll assess her at that point and hopefully we can get her released back out into the wild. So we're just waking up now from the surgery and just wanted to show you that what we've done is placed a small bandage over this area just to basically hold that leg in so that she can't use it and that will just aid the healing process and we'll leave that on there for about six weeks. Uh, this product, Elastoplast, uh, it'll start for a little while in the water. Uh, my aim is to get her back into the water pretty quickly. Uh, initially, not for a couple of days, and then we'll just put her in for half an hour to an hour a day and some nice clean water until those stitches are a bit more sealed, the skin's a bit more sealed. Uh, so this Elastoplast may lift off at that point, but it's cheap and easy to put a new one back on if need be. So hopefully in about eight weeks time, we'll have this turtle back out into the wild.